Okay, lacrosse fans, here's part two of our interview with Andrew Suter. Stick around and enjoy. This is the lowdown. Uh, I'm wondering kind of the opposite then. When it comes to, with a young team, what are some of the things you guys need to keep in check or what are the things you guys are working on? Is it, is it something like, uh, you know, keeping your emotions together? Uh, closing out games. And with that is prodding ourselves on uh, being able to close teams out. You know, how we can blow two fourth quarter leads in our first two games is unacceptable. And going to result in losses so we have to work on definitely our composure and uh you know how to how to win and uh, that's a problem you can have with a young team we only have one guy in our team with an nll championship and uh i would think we're the only team in the league with that so you know it'd be nice to uh you know we got to teach ourselves to close each other out here I'm wondering what it's like, uh, you know, having this strong Lakers contingent with you in the swarm. You know, you've got a handful of players. You've got two coaches even on the bench. I'm wondering what's that like, and how does it help team chemistry there in Minnesota? I think that it's helped tremendously. I mean, Coach Sullivan has been unbelievable with me. I mean, he gave me the honor of wearing the C for his team and, you know, playing for them in the summer and getting to know not only Keister but his father and just getting to know what they're about, getting to know their families and the trust they have in you. And, I mean, it's related back. I don't think you can find any other guys in the league that trust their coaches like me, McIntosh, and Carlson, and Waddy do. So, you know, we have that uh, all-year-round bond now, and, you know, we're all young guys, so hopefully we can stick it out with the Lakers and stay with Sully and the coaching staff and hopefully bring a couple more championships to Peterborough. It's just probably a matter of time before it translates into an NLL championship. You've won uh, at every level, Suits. Uh, what's been your secret growing up? Uh, maybe talk a little bit about uh, your, your background in Orangeville and, and how that uh, has come to characterize your play. Um, I Every single answer to that just comes down to coaching. Um, Matt Sawyer, who I played for for six years, was uh, is the reason why where I am at today in my lacrosse career. He uh, actually took me as just a pure defensive guy and kind of saw something in me and presented me the opportunity to try the transition role and I kind of ran with it and uh, you know he put a lot of weight on my shoulders he had a loose leash on me kind of still staying to kind of help with that side of my game whenever need be and uh, to then go and get to play for Sully the minute I get drafted I mean he immediately took me under his wing at that time with the assistant coach really worked with me helped me with video and, uh, you know, help me try to progress my game as much as I can, and I'm forever thankful for that, and I uh, find it just an absolute pleasure to play for him week in and week out, and even through the summer, uh, getting to know Batley is another great coach, and, you know, he helped me out tons, and, you know, he thinks he can score every time he shoots, so he's been helping me with my offensive touch, too. Looking at your last game, I mean, a huge victory for your club, uh, a 13-12 overtime victory over to the Toronto Rock. Uh, what kind of uh, morale booster is a win like that for you guys? Uh, that's huge. More so not the fact that it was our second home win, but it's the fact that it was the Rock. I mean, we have, I think I would say, 80% of our team's from Ontario, and everybody's a Rock fan growing up, and they have a lot of players that we watched growing up, so... To go out and get that win over them is huge for us as a young team. And, you know, we can't be satisfied. We can't go around thinking that we won our NLL championship because we beat the Toronto Rock. If we think that, we're in a whole heap load of trouble here. So it was a big win for us, but now we got to move forward because we have a Calgary Roughnecks team coming in this weekend that's a pretty scary group. Yeah, I wanted to. Uh, I want that was kind of leading up to my next question, suits. You guys, uh, uh, you're going to be seeing a Calgary team that it could be and probably is the hottest team in the NLL right now. They've got that four game win streak. Um, they're going into Toronto um, Friday night, and then you've got them there Saturday. Uh, just give me a little insight on what you think is going to be the keys to a Minnesota Swarm victory in that one. Uh, shutting down their offense which is no easy task uh curtis dixon might be the hottest player in the mll right now so we're gonna have to get a good matchup on him and another guy that uh hasn't been getting much of the spotlight is if you look at what jeff snyder's doing this year it's pretty special uh i mean i think he's averaging almost three goals a game and he's not losing too many face-offs so we're gonna have to find a way to slow down snyder and dixon and the rest of that offense and at the same time mike poolin's no uh, slouch back there in net so we got our hands full. We're going to have to watch a ton of film and hopefully run them because uh, that's our that's our key and everybody in the league knows it. So we're going to come out running. 
Yeah, that game Saturday night seems like it could be won uh, at the half court in a battle of face-offs. I mean, you've got yourself and McIntosh who are uh, equally suitable, but you're going up against a guy named Jeff Snyder who's probably the best face-off guy to ever play in the game. Um, how do you guys even win half the draws against him? You got to get the ref's timing down. Uh, Jeff's obviously the best. He's the best ever in the face-off circle, and it's pretty rare you say that about a guy that's only been in the league for six years. But he's uh, definitely the best ever in the face-off circle. So what we got to do is try to either find a way to tie him up or find a way to get Jeff off his game and hopefully him jump in the whistle or something like that. Because if you try to face off with him straight up, you're in trouble. So even if we cheat every time and take a fast break that's or uh, take a, a false start, that's fine because at least it slows Jeff down. We talked a little bit about your record right now, 0-3 th on the road, 2-0 and at home. Uh, you guys do look like a different team in some regards at home. Uh, is it a matter of getting that fan support? Got to go out to our fans. We might only, you know, we don't have the 18,000 or 16,000 like these other players, other, sorry, players, other teams. But uh, our fans come in and they're screaming and shouting from the minute they get into the high to the minute they leave. So that's a huge compliment to them, and they deserve us to go 8-0 and at home. So that's our goal right now, and you know, right now we're six games away from that. In terms of the competition, and everything's been so tight. Uh, you look at the schedule, and uh, on any given night, any team can win. It's been really hard to pick with the winners this year. Um, I'm wondering, from the perspective of an NLL captain, how do you guys look at the season? Do you, do you kind of set goals for the year, or is it just on a week-by-week -week basis? Uh, our mindset is exactly week by week because no team's going to let you come in and win. But uh, more so than anything, our first goal is to get the playoffs. And, I mean, since day one, we've been talking about it. We won the Champions Cup in Minnesota, and we feel that we have the team to do it. Looking at your game Saturday night, Calgary are going to be coming off a Friday night game against the Rock. Um, how bad do you want that game to go to overtime? And, and will the fact that they're playing two games help you guys out at all? I hope it goes to the very last minute of overtime so there's tires they can be but at the same time it's a proven stat in the NLL that teams that play the double header usually come out a lot faster than the team that had their night off why do we see that do you think it's just the team's got the momentum with them or they've been traveling they get to spend the time because we've seen Rochester do it even last weekend they've got the two games and uh, they look pretty convincing in both those what is it with those back-to-back -back games I think it's just you get hungry I mean you're sitting around when you're sitting around waiting you're obviously hungry but when you get to taste that taste the action and then you know as soon as that game's over you got to forget about it because you're going right back to work that fires you up absolutely well i'm glad uh we got a chance to talk and appreciate you sharing suits and wish you all the best thanks jesse have a great one talk to you all right, quickly, lacrosse fans, let's have a look at week seven. It's a busy one. Friday night, you've got two games. The Calgary Roughnecks are on the road in Toronto. That's a battle of the first-place teams, Toronto being the first in the east and Calgary the first in the west, of course. Uh, 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you've got the Edmonton Rush hosting the Washington Stealth. That'll be a big game. The Rush, they're looking for their second win of the season. The Stealth, they're looking to go on a bit of a streak. Um, Saturday, three games on the schedule. You've got Minnesota Swarm hosting the Roughnecks. You've got the Rochester. Nighthawks back home hosting the Buffalo Bandits and then in Colorado you've got the Edmonton Rush traveling to Denver to take on the Mammoth so it's going to be a great week seven this is the lowdown stick around for an interview with Rochester Nighthawks forward Corey Vitarelli.